assalamu alaikum um so as as i discussed with you we are we 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 are starting with motor physiology theek hai motor physiology ka maine pehle wo discussion mein bata diya tha ki cns is divided into three uh, sensory special senses and motor physiology theek hai to mere hisse mein motor physiology aayi hai usme kuch higher centers bhi aayenge inshallah तो सिलसिला कुछ यूं है कि साइमल्टेनियसली इनके आपका सेंसरी और वो भी शुरू हुआ है ये भी शुरू हो गया तो दिस ऑब्वियसली इज बिट चैलेंजिंग बट इनशाला थिंग्स विल वर्क आउट ठीक है तो मोटर फिजोलॉजी शुरू करते हैं सो so, आज हम जरा हल्का फुल्का लेक्चर रखेंगे ठीक है ताकि कुछ बच्चे फेमिलराइज हो जाए और क्या कहते हैं रोजे भी हैं और दो सी एन एस के लेक्चर सुबह लेना मैं मेरी सारी की सारी सिंपति आपके साथ है सो वी विल जस्ट लुक एट द ओवरऑल हायर आर की ऑफ द सी एन एस इट्स वेरी सिंपल यू ऑलरेडी नो दिस इन्यूमरेट द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ मोटर एक्शन ओके लुक एट रिफ्लेक्सिस हाउ दे आर क्लासीफाइड एंड एट द एंड वील टॉक अबाउट सम हाई फाइव स्टफ Uh, related to spinal cord uh, we'll see if we have time uh, if we have time we might uh, tickle a bit of uh, muscle spindle at the end all right okay guys okay great so in in you guys can uh, uh हाँ ठीक है गुड राइट सो बेसिकली आई 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 यूजली लाइक टू कम्पेयर दिनियंट इट्स एक्चुअली क्वाइट सिमिलर इन द सेंस दैट द आर्मी कमांड हैज ए हायर आर की ओके ए हायर आर की विद द जनरल्स ऑन द टॉप दैन द ब्रिगेडियर्स एंड मेजर्स इन द मिडल एंड दैन द कैप्टन्स at the at the lowest uh, uh, side of things uh, this is of of course the uh, uh, what you call the, the, the officers you're not talking about the soldiers and so on and so forth you're talking about the officers right the ones who are uh, tasked with thinking about battle and then putting it into execution etc etc okay so just like the army command is supposed to defend Uh, in peace times and and is supposed to uh, plan an attack on when on the offensive however rare that may be um cns motor control also has a similar uh, hierarchy uh, and a similar uh, modus operandi in the sense that it has higher centers which is which are is a is a, is a parallel to the generals in the army then you have the higher centers plus brain stem which which coordinates okay this corresponds to the brigadier major uh, combination in the army uh, of course with input from the generals and then you have the muscles at the end uh, which uh, is a parallel for captains yes so just like uh, the generals are supposed to think of the ideal defense strategy or the ideal attack strategy then break it down to the brigadiers and majors who then uh, think about it uh, make make a, a make an actionable plan okay and then distribute different components of that actionable plan and then gives it down to the captains who then with the soldiers execute whichever part of the plan that they have been given yes exactly the same way we have the higher centers we have the higher centers which uh, make uh, if so so if you want to get up and go right now or start running or go to sleep you will need a a set of complex movements uh, which the higher centers will need to uh, manage okay so this guy needs to get up from his sofa and hit the bed this will require a set of complex movements 
with the higher centers when put together and then coordinate with the the brain stem i.e the mid or lower brains brain areas centers which will then break it up into manageable uh, actions or manageable parts of the movements so the, the whole movement is broken down into uh, a set of movements uh, which are then transmitted to the muscles and the muscles then physically carry it out yes any questions Anybody else? Okay. Chika. If the CR is listening in, I got your message, Vite, on WhatsApp. And let the students know that we are recording this, this whole thing. Yes. Yes. Captains, Vite. Uh, are responsible for the troops, the soldiers. So yes, I mean, yeah, exact parable, nahi hai, lekin, yes, you're right. Okay. As long as you understand that both are very set hierarchical structures, right? Okay. We move on to motor actions. Okay. Now, actions. Uh, you must have heard that. Uh, actions are voluntary, motor actions, and they are involuntary. Involuntary are reflex actions, while voluntary actions are just the actions that, that you uh, can do yourself. Okay. Now, if you think about it, your everyday life, say walking or uh, getting up or, or driving or riding a bike, any, any, any routine activity which involves uh, more than uh, two or three muscles and uh, is longer than five seconds any complex movement okay this they usually involve both voluntary and involuntary muscles so I'll, 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 tell, I'll explain what I mean what happens when you ride a bike okay and these days it's uh, basically COVID has, has uh, re uh, re-triggered the, the, the passion for cycling. I see a lot of young people cycling around. Okay, and that's good. It's good for health. But when you cycle, you know that there is a conscious component, the voluntary component, which is when you get on up on it and you start the thing, the start, start riding your bike. But then you, you're just lost in thoughts. They may be checking out the cat on the sidewalk or the car coming up from up front, which model it is. Uh, you may be talking to your friends even while you're riding this bike. What happens to the motor motor uh, actions of the physical riding of the bike? They become, quote unquote, automatic. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> okay. I, I, I need feedback, right? You know how I teach. Uh, it's very to and fro. So, uh, riding a bike is a good example. Okay. But, uh, I don't know that this is how it is doing this software. If it is fixed on 101, pe fixed hai, to I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, this is beyond my control. The college had assured me that this uh, will accommodate more. Uh, it is very frustrating on my part as well that uh, kids are locked out. But rest assured that inshallah, uh, I will put in every effort on my part to put this uh, lecture on on YouTube for you to view afterwards. Okay, and of course I'm available for your questions. What we can do, uh, see uh, if you are listening in or the other other kids. I will, yes. I will be available for a uh, live YouTube session later on today. Uh, whatever is convenient to you guys, I'll, I'll make time. Okay. 
So whatever is left from your understanding uh, or by missing the lecture live, uh, we can cover it in the live YouTube uh, uh, thing in which you can see me. I, I can actually gesture. You can see my hands. And I can explain things with, with my hands, which I can't hear. So there are limitations. Uh, so you, we have that option, OK, guys? We can even do it after iftar. So don't worry, OK? Just just relax. Uh, nobody, inshallah, uh, uh, if I have my say, nobody will be left out, all right? OK, thanks. Yes. But I can't hear you. But uh, thank, uh, thank because you. my mic, I think, is in the socket of the both combined speaker and mic thing. I can see that you are. Maybe saying something. Can't hear you. If you can type, that'll be great. And if it's regarding this thing, you, we can always discuss this later. Okay? Tell uh, So voluntary and involuntary, they basically, when we are talking about practical life, they they merge. They, it's 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 difficult to demarcate uh, both type of actions. Okay? There are no in in regular life. I'm saying. In regular life, there are no hard, hard and fast boundaries between uh, voluntary and involuntary uh, movements. They sort of merge together. This is the beauty of CNS. Okay, reflexes I'll skim through because you have <clears throat> been um, taught this since God knows which class. Uh, they are predictable, involuntary, stereotyped responses to a stimulus. The best example, this is a lot of uh, vocabulary. So let me just put it into context. You must have uh, heard about the good old knee jerk. When you hit the, the, the knee tendon with, with, with a reflex hammer and the leg straightens up, it goes into extension. This is called a knee jerk. Yes. So if the stimulus, i.e. the hitting on the patella is enough, okay. The, if the if the stimulus is enough, then let me just ask you. I just change this word stimulus into red font and 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 bold it. Are you able to see it? Okay, because I'm also trying to figure out because in Zoom I get a whole range of uh, of tools, of markers, pencils, this that the annotation tools, right? So for for this. For, for Google Meet, I actually downloaded a, an extra package for those tools. But as soon as I turned them on, the whole thing went white. And I couldn't see you guys. So that's not working for me. So I may be using this this whole thing here uh, smartly. I mean, I'll be uh, changing colors just to put off my emphasis. Or Can you see the cursor moving? This cursor. I'm moving it. Yes, sir. Oh, that's great then. So this can be my this can be my pointer. Okay, guys. Hello. Okay, great. Right. So if the stimulus is adequate, we call it actually the the term is adequate stimulus. Dr. Noura will be talking about it in sensory physiology. So if the stimulus is adequate, then the knee does not have a choice. And, and sorry, if the adequate stimulus is there and the whole descending motor pathway is healthy and is normal. Any stuff is normal. The guy is normal, in which you are eliciting this reflex, and you give him this adequate stimulus. Then the knee does not have a choice but to go into extension. So, so and you would know what will happen. So that's predictable. It, it's you. It, it can't help but to go into extension, i.e., involuntary and stereotyped. Any, it's the same thing all the time. Okay. So you now understand what this definition means, and you know that all reflexes have a anatomical basis to them. Okay, we call it the reflex arc. The reflex arc. You disturb, this is an important concept which needs to be reiterated. Uh, this will come in handy in CNS lesions. Uh, wherever we are talking about reflexes and you disturb any part of the reflex, whether it's uh, uh, the uh, afferent path or the efferent path, the effector or the sensory organ on the or the integration part, any part of the reflex arc, if it's disturbed, then you will not have the reflex. Yes, this is the this is why reflex arc is a key concept. OK. Now, as far as classification is concerned. 
as far as classification is concerned, there are many ways to classify. Okay. However, I will just restrict to explaining some of them uh, because most of this stuff is really anatomical in basis. Okay. So number of synapses, monosynaptic, polysynaptic, uh, based on segments. Uh, it really is uh, 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 stuff that you can read up in um, in an archway. We are more interested in the clinical stuff. Okay, this is where the money is. So we have a set of uh, reflexes which are superficial. Then we have a set of reflexes which are deep, visceral, and pathological. Most of the viewers on reflexes they hover around. The clinical, the clinical reflexes. Okay, so superficial includes abdominal, premastric, plantar, conjunctival. Deep is I just explained knee jerk to you. There's also an ankle, bicep, tricep, maxillary reflex. S similarly, in visceral, you have direct and indirect reflex accommodation is a famous one. And in pathological, you have Babinski sign. You may have heard of it, and clones. Okay, all of this will be covered in due course. Okay. Has anyone heard of the Babinski sign? Question mark, question mark. Good. 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 That's good. Okay. Now, now a bit, uh, some extra bits about the spinal cord. This is something which uh, fascinates me personally. Uh, spinal cord was once uh, thought of as some something that is just a conduit of information of things going up that is the sensory uh, fibers and things coming down that is the motor fibers that is not the case anymore okay so uh, you will you can you can read up all these organizations uh, in which you'll be studying ascending tracts uh, with dr noura in sensory physiology Descending tracks with me uh, when we uh, when we talk about motor descending tracks in the next chapter of Guyton. Uh, however, uh, this this uh, new understanding now it's old by the way, but classical books uh, I hope they have updated. Uh, they are updated now uh, to include the smart features of the spinal cord. Uh, that is, it not being just a conduit of information up and down. It actually is smart. It can think of, it can think. Osama Sohail. Is Osama Sohail a student of ours? Okay, he's in. Okay, so there are, there are local circuits uh, in the spinal cord they have discovered. And check this out. So this year, this this I'm, I'm I'm telling you is the is the importance of interneurons. Once considered just the conduit between afferent and efferent neurons, if you remember your FSC classes, uh, but inter interneurons they have now discover, increasingly discovering the immense potential of interneurons. Okay, so you have excitatory and inhibitory local inter interneurons literally in the center of the whole configuration of the spinal cord. This is the whole spinal cord getting information from look how many places it's getting information from muscles, uh, muscles, tendons, joints, skin, uh, different spinal levels, uh, i.e. interconnections between these different spinal levels, descending tracks, the motor tracks, okay, uh, which converge uh, on the motor neuron. So there are so many afferents coming into the spinal cord and where do they end up? They end up in the local uh, interneurons. Okay. Now, this is not the cool part. The cool part is this guy here, local pattern generator circuit. So they found, and again, this I'm quoting from Ganon from uh, way back. Okay. They may have discovered new stuff now. Interesting people can look it up. Okay. So local pattern generator. Once one one is in the cervical region, and one is in the lumbar region. Okay. What does it do? It's a group of neurons locally present 
in one batch or one place in the spinal cord at the cervical and the lumbar level and look what it does it has a big input into the very important interneurons which are by the way the nerve center for all afferent information and then these interneurons give their output to motor neuron which then controls the muscles so if this is the nerve center check this out what is this this is giving a, a, a very important input into the nerve center so this started looking it up what is this what 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 kind of circuits or what kind of neurons are these and what do they do well they, what they found out what was most most interesting they found out that these local pattern generators actually learn uh, com some complex movements or certain sequences of the complex movements. So, for example, walking. What is walking? Walking is the to and fro interchanging uh, movement of the right leg muscles and then the left leg muscles, then the right leg muscles, then the left leg muscles, and so on and so forth. And in between, you're balancing your body on the hip. The upper whole body weight needs to be in balance. Okay. And the, the arms even, they swing in tandem. Okay. This is your walking. Yes. What they found. Okay. Yes, guys. All there. Yep. Okay. I would like to hear from some other people. Okay. Six people, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay. So you guys are alive. Good. Okay. Let's come back. So what they found is that the local pattern generator uh, receives input from the higher centers. So when you want to uh, walk, for example, the higher centers, remember the, the, the captain of the army who is supposed to give the uh, received orders to the soldiers? Well, this sort of functions like that. These local generate circuits, they function like that. So uh, they receive, at least in part, uh, the, the message from the higher centers. And then they have an input to give to the nerve, uh, to, to the interneurons to execute the walking through controlling the motor neuron. Make sense? This makes sense? Yep. <clears throat> okay. Makes sense to a couple of people, then we are good. Okay. All right. Great. I do remember my class. This is a good class. Good. Now imagine that if this this year, this circuit here, after receiving the same set of movements over and over again, what if it tends to remember it? Voila! If it tends to remember it, then could it be that it itself can at least partially trigger walking? Question mark, question mark. They found out that yes, in a limited way, if it's, I mean, check this out. If it's electronically stimulated in a SCI patient, let, let's talk about animals first. SCI is spinal cord injury patients, okay? But let's talk about animals. Animals in which they have, they had severed the spinal cord uh, completely. So, this segment of the spinal cord, whichever it is, it was completely severed, completely disconnected from the higher centers. Okay. Uh, but this local pattern generator, since it's part of the spinal cord, it was intact, right? So they electrically stimulated this pattern generator circuit. It did its job. It gave its input to the interneurons. And guess what happened? With support, that cat or the dog, they exhibited uh, walking movements in their limbs. Yes. How cool is that? This means what we are discussing actually happens. Yes. We need uh, your feedback now because I'm going to 
pile it up, pile up some more information, real time information. Very cool indeed. Yes, sir, sir, good. Sorry, question is sir. PC, sir. Oh, what was that? Sir, it's a sir, sir, can I charity, my love? Okay, so so most of you are with the program. Great. Acha. Now check this out. Look, you guys, inshallah, will become doctors. Inshallah. Okay. Uh, Ahmed Mushtaq, you have raised your hand. Bitte, just fire away the question. Okay. Mere paas bitte bahut limited space hai yahan pe. So, aap bas question kar le musse. Ahmed Mushtaq. Excuse me, sir. नहीं बेटे जुबानी नहीं मैं वो मैं सुन नहीं पाऊंगा आप ये टेक्स्ट करें इस पे ना ये जो बच्चे चैट कर रहे हैं ना इस पे आप लिखते हैं वेल वेरी दैट्स अ गुड क्वेश्चन ये एमएन मुशाल ने किया ना आ दे व्हाट दे हैव फाउंड एट अगेन दिस इज डेटेड इनफॉरमेशन दे दे बेसिकली वर रिसर्चिंग वॉकिंग मूवमेंट्स ओके सो दे फाउंड दिस लोकल पैटर्न जेनरेटर्स फॉर वॉकिंग मूवमेंट्स इट्स कंपलीटली ओके अब्दुल्ला इट्स कंपलीटली इमेजिनेबल दैट दिस लोकल जेनरेटर्स कैन बी फाउंड फॉर अदर कॉम्प्लेक्स मूवमेंट्स रिमेंबर दिस इज सम सीरियसली कॉम्प्लेक्स रिसर्च Uh, and it it moves along. Uh, it you I, I have I have to say it used to move along very very slowly, but I have some very interesting things to share with you in the coming slides. Things are really moving now, mashallah. Okay. So they applied the same concept on SCI patients, uh, spinal cord injury patients, and what they found is in uh, partial spinal cord injury patients, uh, these local circuits stimulating them. uh in sync with uh, the rest of okay reflex arc and reflex action could you hold on that question bete i'll just uh, complete this point and then come back to your question okay nahi 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 maine ye nahi kaha main keh raha hu ke aap usko aise kar le ke higher centers uh, uh, usually go through the generator circuits local pattern generator circuits okay and sometimes they don't need to once they trigger uh, a a movement they don't need to keep them themselves available throughout the movement these local pattern generators can uh, take uh, take over uh, uh, at least part of that recurring movement so walking mein recurring movements are hoti hai na right leg left leg right leg left leg agonist antagonist agonist antagonist it was something is contracting something is relaxing so there is a lot of repet repetitive movement in complex movements so what what happens is uh, some of the uh, uh, the work the heavy lifting is is given to these uh, generator circuits to carry on they are just given the command and then these circuits just this carry on the command okay right moaz asked a question moaz please dobara se pooch lo Or it the thing just vanishes from my screen. G better, absolutely. Absolutely. To initiate something, you need higher centers. Things are again the word hierarchy should ring a tone with you now. Hierarchy is very important. That's why the the mention of the army is very important. Things don't spontaneously happen. They shouldn't happen. they need a okay from the higher centers so sensory stimulus to sir enter the class ji bete to send dobara se bete aapka bahut jaldi wo khatam ho gaya could you re copy your mess question please imam sadiq fire away bete just write your question You, by the way guys you can always ask me questions acha is there an extent to which the complexity of an art how complex can they be 
they can be as complex as you want really so a surgeon those spontaneous in muscle absolutely uh let's hope not abdullah so going back to the previous question uh complex movements can be a surgeon doing eye surgery or you typing on your keyboard uh to a carpenter uh cutting the wood it can be anything however what the what this discussion is about is the most frequently repeated movement okay so please keep that in mind uh we are not talking about a new learned movement or a movement that is uh not frequently uh, done at least this particular concept uh and it's not i haven't checked it from the latest uh, latest situation you are more than welcome to look it up these local pattern generator circuits what's the state of research these days i am more interested in a thing called ai so i'm just moving on please ask me questions when i put it up on youtube i'll have i'll be happy to answer okay give it is all it's, it's it, it is looped in in feedback uh i think we have passed a lot of time on this slide it's i'm happy that it has triggered your interest and this is what i want from the subsequent discussion as well not this discussion this discussion is dedicated to the to the notoriously idiot amongst you i don't need to name them they know who they are <laughs> yes so i hope i don't end up be having this teachers nightmare where i have just whistled and people heard the whistle and then just forgot and eh? so on a light moment we are now moving to conclude by sharing with you the latest state of research in sci patients no naughty comments on the cartoon or maybe kids in understand the cartoon eh okay so so advances in medicine we now have ai artificial intelligence 5g and so on uh artificial intelligence uh, especially takes my fancy uh, it's pretty interesting and it is the it's the it's the thing that is here to stay i do encourage uh, you people or whoever is interested to visit this uh, youtube original series um uh, ai can be scary if uh, you are watching too many terminator movies but i think we are all right now at the moment the age of ai is a youtube original series uh it has uh, all the stardom for for people who like uh, mickey mouse movies so this guy i imagine is the iron man uh, robert downey jr uh and he is actually the guy who runs this show not the obviously the scientific aspect but they put him on to get uh, attention of uh, uh, people like you okay with very little attention span so this is a, a great program uh, do watch it it premiered in 2019 um, I, i i admit i have not been following it up recently but i watched the many uh, initial episodes and it was just great but then run yes please please ask the question type it up Okay, no worries. There was a question about some monkey. Is Iron Man your favorite Avenger? Oh, please, Abdullah. Nothing can beat Batman. Okay, it's Batman always. What is all Iron Man? Is Batman an Avenger? Yeah, yeah, it's Batman. Come on, Batman it is. Anyone who does not believe in Batman is not one of us. Okay, Team Batman. Yes. is a dc go oh, yes yes my kids always correct me on this batman is from the dc and avengers is what marvel marvel comics what are we discussing here eh guys okay okay now now you are alive eh now you are alive well joker is a totally different ideological discussion which we can have some later part you know don't get me started on joker amazing character they've made uh 
um, and in the dark night, and I'll start the case again that from the new thing. <laughs> now this is the class that I know. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Achha, achha, chalo, ab, jab ho gaya kaam, what's your favorite Batman movie? Come on, one person, one choice only. Limited, just one minute, okay? We're not wasting any time. Christian Bale, hands down. Christian Bale, hands down. But The Dark Knight, yes. That's it. That's it, guys. Dark Knight, no better movie. Yes, the end. Well, well done. I, I, yes, that's it. I like you guys even more now. Okay? And you know that discussion between Batman and Joker in the end scene when who, uh, the Joker is hanging literally by a thread and Batman is like about to kill him? That discussion when he says, you know, we really are, you really are, we, we really are when a Im unstoppable force meets an unmovable object. Oh my God. Oh my God. Who writes like that? And eh? what, what a, what a statement. Have you seen the killing joke on the red book? Achha, bas, penguin wala, penguin wala, bachcha wala tha. Heath Ledger is, is it. He, he, it's wo amazing tha, yaar, wo amazing. And anyway, okay, guys, come on, let's come back. Okay, so this is a program that discusses the uh, various uh, applications of AI, as you can see in this picture, uh, in healthcare and elsewhere, okay? Recently, Google CEO also talked about uh, diagnosing retinopathy in India using an algorithm based on AI. Uh, now we have artificial limbs which directly correspond with, remember the circuits of the spinal cord? Uh, yes. So those circuits uh, can be hooked up electronically with artificial limbs. Uh, and this guy, by the way, is a top-notch CEO of some company I've forgotten now. Uh, and he lost his legs due to a, if I remember, he was a avid hiker and he lost his limbs to a hiking accident, uh, not to, to his determined, uh, he just uh, got new ones made. Uh, they made this very nice program, so do check it. check it out. And this this is a personal favorite story. These are the parents of Mr. Shaw, uh, and this is the guy. This is the dude uh, when he was playing American football. Okay, uh, but then uh, something happened. It's called Qada, Qada -e Ilahi. Uh, he contracted a disease. Not contracted. He always had the disease. It just got triggered in his late twenties. Uh, Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, in which you have progressive loss of, of your motor function. That's why I'm mentioning it here. And he lost his, his, his uh, speech. Okay, I seem to have lost the internet connection. Where did you lose me? Let me know quickly, please. I got disconnected. I've got reconnected now. What was the last thing that you meant, that you heard? Yeah. Abdullah? Bazaja. I was talking about ALS. Guys, look up ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. So this guy, this guy here, he had ALS all the, all all his life. But when he was this little, the disease actually does not express itself. It expresses itself in the late twenties or so, if I remember correctly, or early thirties. Okay. Now it is a very debilitating disease. There is progressive motor loss. It's a fancy way of saying that you lose control of your body one function at a time. It's very distressing, okay? Very distressing, it's not a joke. Uh, it's a very serious uh, situation, okay? So this boy who was a star football player, by the way, I think he, he went up to play for the National Baseball League or something, uh, National Football Base uh, League, NFL, which is a huge deal 
it's like a pakistani cricketer local cricketer uh, finds himself uh, playing for pakistan cricket team national cricket team so that's a prestigious thing right so and playing for nfl is a prestigious thing i think he got into nfl but then ALS struck and now you can imagine it's like the super bowl yes and now you can imagine his life his life changed 180 degrees and we should be we should also take a leaf from his life to be humble in this life of ours and be be grateful to all the things that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for us and we take for granted every time uh, all the time we should never take things for granted okay so one of the things that parents really missed was the way he talked he was a very charming man uh, uh, a talker yes uh, this is where google then the google the firm then partnered with uh, with some with some people and i think they were the ones who started the ice bucket challenge to uh, raise money for als patients als research and if you see see the video uh he also just before anyway so they they get, gathered enough uh, seed money to put in a research project and they started looking up how ai can help him talk or express himself okay so let tabish bete voice agar clear nahi hai inshallah ye aapko recorded mil jayega aap usme se isko dekh lena main waise bhi i am just talking about ai now okay you can always look this channel up the age of ai and you know what i'm talking about so i'm just saying i'm just hoping that one day some of you will end up in a research career okay in addition to your clinical hours please do pursue it you will be saving lives in the hundreds and the thousands of people who almost have given up hope of simple things like moving or talking you can make the difference if you guys are aware of the latest research what is going on and ai is something to look for look out for okay that is what i will conclude today's lecture on i hope uh, most of you got a chance to hear me uh, look at the slides and inshallah uh, do uh, abdullah will inshallah coordinate with me uh, if the need arises for a quick uh, as quick as 15 minutes even a youtube uh, live session in which we can have a conversation about today's lecture or this can be a feature which is always there for you in the coming lectures as well okay theek hai bete aap aap uske baad dekh lena uh, it's it's entirely up to you this is just a this is just a, an option i just ye paper mein nahi aayega okay <laughs> i will not give it in the paper this is just to inspire you that there are no medicine is changing and you know what is a guy i always forget his name he's a japanese scientist physicist starts with an f fukush something i don't know anybody out there who knows remembers this guy uh abdullah bazajo yes thank you moaz wow moaz well done boy makao yeah do aur likhna zara for the for the benefit of others makao kuku karke uska naam hai kuch this is a japanese fellow very acclaimed yeah this is a guy makao ya machio kaku very very uh, literate guy <clears throat> so he goes into the future of ai and he met, he gives predictions scientific predictions not of nostradamus scientific predictions into which career will be obsolete till the year i think 2030 okay 2030 is just 9 years down the line guys you can imagine that if something that you're pursuing i mean obviously medicine is not going to go out the window anytime soon but parts of medicine will so i'm just saying uh be aware of ai ai will take over certain functions of almost every profession known to us today in 2021 okay so better it's better that you uh uh acha i have seen the movie i did not see any ai maybe later on you can comment on this abdullah uh so keeping an eye out for ai 
will actually help you in your career one day okay and being with the bandwidth will help you one day okay just don't be a dud doctor just you know 2 plus 2 4 wala na ban jana wo bahut se hain be the cutting edge shop and if some of you do that uh, inshallah uh, uh, that will be wonderful okay second to look at is data science uh, machine learning these are the key words now these days which are will be very important in the coming future theek hai chalo with that it's adios uh, for today inshallah so aap se inshallah phir we'll speak to you tomorrow okay take care and allah hafiz